welcome to a new video in Hort Americas TV. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort Americas Technical Service, and today I will be teaching you how to select the best lighting option for your project. So artificial lighting can be part of great projects and ideas. Uh, lamps can be a really good investment, but there is always a but, right? Uh, lamps can be a good investment when we ask ourselves the right kind of questions. Otherwise, uh, we can buy something that we don't need, something that will not work for our system, or worse, we can buy a bad quality product that will require a quickly replacement and uh, meaning that we'll just be wasting more money. So which kind of question uh, should you ask yourself before selecting a lamp for horticulture practices? So let's start from very easy questions, like what do I need? Which are the better options? And why is this important? It's really difficult to select a lamp for your system because there are so many options out there. And there are a lot of things that you should consider before buying a lamp. And for learning that, you will have to stay and watch the whole video because that is the main purpose, to teach you um, which are like the most important characteristics that you should look in a lamp in order to select the best option. So let me start from very basic information. I know that some people have more experience, but I do know that we have some customers that they have, they have some trouble selecting uh, which lamp is the one best for the system. So we have different kind of lamps and uh, different growing systems. So some lamps will not work for other growing systems. Um, a clear example is the difference, for example, between a top lighting system and a vertical farming system. So in a vertical farming system, for example, uh, plants are, are grown in a multi-layer uh, system where height between the plants and the lamps allow the use of multiple lamps with a lower photon flux in comparison with uh, the power required in a top lighting system uh, where the photon flux should be way higher in order to reach plant canopy levels. So top lighting systems are usually used in greenhouses for supplemental lighting. And as you can see in this picture, uh, the light is way higher than in a vertical farming system from the plant. And this, is, this kind of lamp is also used uh, in uh, plant factories for, for example, cannabis production. So here we have two different systems uh, that demand like really different characteristics in terms of the lamp. Another option in the use of artificial lighting is uh, photoperiodic lighting. In, in some plants, uh, flowering can be triggered by uh, short days or long day conditions. Therefore, uh, some growers can be in, in, interested in the use of artificial lighting uh, to promote artificial product photo periods and uh, delay or promote flowering. So uh, plants have a response to photo period from very low light intensity levels meaning that a simple lamp sometimes can, can do the work and induce a photoperiodic response. So uh, when your objective is only and mainly to induce a photoperiodic response, you can look for a lamp designed for photoperiodic treatments. These lamps are usually cheaper than the rest in comparison, for example, to a vertical farming system or top, or top lighting system. And, um, but these lamps can only be used for a photoperiodic response. Uh, you will not promote significantly uh, the, the, the growth of the plants with this kind of lamp. So uh, lamps uh, used for top lighting, vertical farming, and photoperiodic lighting um, can have very different characteristics and prices. Uh, therefore, it's crucial to define which lamp will be the one necessary for your system and based on your system and the plant that you're growing, uh, select the, the correct kind of lamp for your system. 
Well, uh, first, a lamp with a good design uh, can really make the difference in energy savings and the overall product quality, uh, which will be totally related to the plant health, growth, and your expenses. Sounds important, right? So where can you look for information in order to compare lighting options, like where there is a place that you can trust and where you can go and look for information before uh, selecting your lamp? Uh, for that, let me introduce you to uh, DLC. So DLC stands for uh, Design Light Consumption. So DLC is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to achieve energy optimization. So they function also like a third-party verifier of lamps for the whole, for horticultural use. So by reaching DLC website, which is the one that I'm showing in, in this slide, uh, you can get to know which light manufacturers comply with the different technical requirements proposed by the DLC. So these technical requirements provide enough information to get you to identify reliable and efficient lighting options. So here you can see a list of, of parameters that are included uh, in the technical requirements by the DLC. So these technical requirements include information about the photosynthetic photon flux, spectra quantum distribution, photosynthetic photon intensity distribution, efficacy, long-term performance, warranty, and electrical performance. So now let's explain uh, why each of these parameters listed by the DLC are important and which are the minimum requirements stated by the DLC for some of them. Let's start with the photosynthetic photon flux. So the photosynthetic photon flux will provide you information about uh, the power of the lamp. I know this is not the most correct way to say it, but it's probably an easy way to understand. So uh, the correct way to say it is that uh, the photosynthetic photon flux is the total output of the lamp, is the total output of the product per time, including uh, the light spectrum that the plant used to do photosynthesis, which is from 400 to 700. So basically photosynthetic photon flux is how strong is your lamp, how much light uh, the lamp is emitting. So for example, in here I'm showing uh, one example of L1000 because we have different kinds of L1000 and also one example of the GERS light. So for this example, I am showing that the L1000 has a photosynthetic photon flux of 1761 micromoles per second. And then I have the GERS life, and I can see here that the photosynthetic photon flux is 86.3 micromoles per second. So you can recognize in here how when we have a, a system, when we, when we are planning to use a, a, a light in the top, like in the roof, in the top with like a top lighting system, we will require a lamp with with more light, like with a stronger, in a stronger output. So uh, in here we can see the difference, the clear difference between the L1000 and uh, the GERS light, which is utilized in vertical farming systems where the plants are more close uh, to the lamps. So uh, then uh, this system won't demand like a high output. You, we, we can work perfectly with uh, a lower output, but the one we are providing in here, which is uh, 86.3 micromoles per sec. Let's move to spectral quantum distribution. So a spectral quantum distribution is very similar to, to the previous one, uh, but in here we are providing information about the output of the lamp, but linked to the light quality. So light quality are the colors of the light. So the spectral quantum distribution uh, provides information about the photon flux that is, uh, that is distributed across the wavelengths. So for example, in here I am showing you the different options that we have for L1000. Uh, you can see how uh, we have different, uh, different conditions in light quality. And in this table, uh, you can see uh, the different percentage within the different colors. 
So, uh, but utilizing the information about the photosynthetic photon flux and the information from uh, this table, you can easily get, get an idea of the spectral, uh, spectral quantum distribution. So a spectral quantum distribution would be how much light is your uh, lamp emitting, but including uh, like where is that light, in which colors uh, we have from, from the light, and how much light uh, have uh, each of those colors. Then we have uh, efficacy. So efficacy is calculated uh, using the data about the lamp output and also the electrical input. So this is basically telling you how efficient is your lamp. So the DLC stands that in order to consider a lamp uh, efficient, um, you should have levels of e efficacy uh, of at least uh, 1.81 micromoles per joule. Um, this exactly what, what, it, what it's telling you is how many moles is this light providing you per joule? So for example, the DLC say that your lamp should have at least 1.81 micromoles per joule, meaning that if you have a lamp that has less of this, uh, you can assume that this lamp is not really efficient, that it is wasting more energy than the light that is providing you. Then we have the long-term performance. So this is just information about the ability of the device to maintain its output, which is usually measured as quanta of photons, uh, over time. So how can this lamp maintain its output through the time? Like how many hours can stand uh, having the same output? So uh, the DLC state that a lamp should maintain an output of uh, 90 quantile photons for at least uh, 36,000 hours. So that is what should you consider as a minimum uh, for uh, consider that your lamp has a good long-term performance. Then we move to warranty. So warranty is very easy to understand because we use this for many products. So uh, warranty provides you information about uh, the condition of your product over the time and how uh, the manufacturer will help you with reparation of the replacement of the product uh, during this warranty time. So the DLC states that a good lamp manufacturer uh, should provide at least a warranty of five years. So just consider that before buying a lamp, look for a manufacturer that can provide you at least five years warranty. Remember that, that this light sometimes, it, that there are, I mean the price of, of some lamps can be high, but uh, the warranty is something really important because some lamp some lamps will last two years or one, of one or one year, and that is not like really useful for a project because you will have to replace your lamps and waste more money. And in here, I'm just showing uh, an example of how can you look for this information. You usually, uh, when you are looking for a lamp, uh, you can you can find information about the model of the lamp and all like very specific information like the warranty. Um, in here uh, is just an example of a table and you can see like different, different aspects and you can find in here that the warranty is of five years. This is for the L1000. Now let's move to electrical performance. So power factor is defined as the cosine of an angle between current and voltage of a circuit. I know that this is uh, a little hard to understand, but at lower power factor, higher would be uh, the load current. And the load current is the amount of el electrical current that is passed from uh, a power source to the device. So we usually, well, wants uh, to have a, a very high uh, power factor because if the low, if, if the power factor is low, uh, that will indicate a poor utilization of electrical power. 
So this is why uh, we will look for high levels in power factors. And uh, the DLC states uh, that the lamp should have at least a power factor of 0.90 in order to be qualified as efficient and reliable. So um, this is the information about the electrical performance. And in here, I'm just showing a table. Uh, as I told you, uh, if you visit the website, you can check all these parameters. Uh, they have a table, like just explaining in a, in a summary all the information that I provided in this presentation. So you can uh, you can know now that this is a place that you can trust and find uh, the requirements and also manufacturers that you can trust and also compare and at least ha have a better better information uh, before selecting uh, your lamp. And another things that you will have to consider uh, before buying a lamp, uh, this is just uh, uh, some advice, is uh, how much experience uh, do they have? I mean, how much experience do the manufacturer has? Um, how long have been have been in the lighting business? Uh, are, they, are they just starting? Um, do you think that they will still be running uh, through your warranty? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you need to, to be sure that if you have a problem in five years, they will still be uh, out there. So uh, this is also something useful. And also, uh, can they provide light plans? So when you are buying lamps, you are, you are doing uh, like a high investment and uh, you really need to look for someone that can provide a good service and a full service um, that, that can help you to select the lamp, that can help you to know how many lamps you have and exactly how much light you will have. So this will make uh, your project uh, like more, more specific and you will have uh, more uh, correct information in order to manage your system. So the light plans are something that you really need to consider to have in order to know exactly how much light you have and how are your plans uh, responding to that. So in North Americas, uh, we can provide you all this information. Uh, we also can supply uh, uh, the light plans and also um, provide all the technical service that you will require after that, just to, to know that you are doing well in your system. So that is, like, that is really like a, a full, uh, 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 that is like a really uh, a full service. That is something that you should be looking for. So just remember, the most complete search you can do, uh, evaluating all this aspect presented in, the, in this presentation, uh, the most complete lighted system you will be able to acquire. So remember, my name is Carla Garcia. Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you enjoy this presentation.